Uh, I, I like when uh, when you preach because I have to do very little hosting. <laughs> uh, I can tell. So. I can talk. That's for sure. <laughs> Well, hello and welcome to this week's Midweek Mashup. I'm here once again with our lead minister, Eric Hayes, yeah. uh, in our Galatians series. Yeah. Uh, man, uh, one of my favorite quotes from your message this Sunday was that you wish you had like two and a half hours yeah. to uh, to preach this sermon. Yeah. I, I can't give you an extra two hours, <laughs> uh, but I can give you an extra 15 sure. minutes. Yeah. Uh, what, if anything, do you wish that you could have oh, spoken man. about this Sunday? There's, there's kind of three-ish two and a half, but almost three sections in Galatians chapter four, mm-hmm. um, where, uh, and you know, the, the, the chapter and verse stuff is added later. So some of it's mm-hmm. arbitrary, uh, you know, uh, chapter five, verse one really should go in chapter four, mm-hmm. you know, and, and mm-hmm. so like, it's tricky to, 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 you know, systematize it, but each of these three sections could be, you know, a half hour sermon mm-hmm. of its own. Um, and so that's, that's tough. Um, but a big part of it is just the you know, I always say this when we're when we're talking about the Bible, but that context matters um, mm-hmm. uh, almost as much, not quite as much, obviously, but almost as much as the words themselves, because mm-hmm. words, uh, as we know, can mean different things to different people, mm-hmm. and um, uh, definitions of things change over time, and so, mm-hmm. um, so that that's what's tricky is digging into the context of Galatians, mm-hmm. and. Um, you know, one of the things that I've been seeing a lot of back and forth um, between different, uh, you know, uh, Christian thinkers is, you know, one one side of an argument will say, like, a clear reading of this text says mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. And then the other side will say, there's no such thing as a clear reading of the text because we're reading a, uh, you know, a 2,000-year-old letter that was written in Greek to a culture that we are so far from, mm-hmm. right? And um, and it, when we can find a clear reading of the text, uh, that's great. But uh, I tend to side with the other side more. They say like, there's really no such thing as a clear reading of the text. Mm-hmm. So all of that to say, um, you know, this conversation about <clears throat> you know works of the law versus faith um, is is a tricky thing because um, the pe- people want that to say like you don't actually have to do anything to earn salvation, and that is absolutely true. Um, but but the, sometimes the, the conclusion they come to is then uh, faith doesn't have to change you at all. Mm. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. you, as long as you say the right words and pray the right prayer, you're mm-hmm. covered. But um, Paul doesn't, he, when he talks about you know faith versus works, he's not talking about um, you know, just disembodied belief. He absolutely means that true faith will transform your actions. Um, and we're going to get into that this week in Galatians 5. Mm-hmm. But I just think that's really important that as we read Paul's words, um, we don't pit him against the book of James, mm-hmm. who says, faith without works is dead. Mm-hmm. And what he's saying is believing the right things but not being changed by it mm-hmm. is useless. It's not right. It's not real. There's no salvation in that, right? Mm-hmm. Um uh, and so that that's the stuff that I'd love to dig into to Galatians more, but th- um, we're going to get into that this week. So I kind of left it alone, mm-hmm. even though it's like right there in front of you. Mm-hmm. The other thing that I didn't get a chance to dig into um, is the, the Hagar and Sarah uh, mm-hmm. passage uh, that mm-hmm. kind of concludes it. Um, some people think that um, that was just kind of like a throw in to try to make a word picture. Other people think that, hey, that might be the actual crux of the the. the passage or even the whole book Mm. of Galatians. Um, And uh, it's a kind of easy to understand thing, which is why I didn't dive into it too much. Um, But, but, um, you know, for, for, for Paul, and I talked about this a little bit for Paul in this word picture, he's saying that, you know, Hagar represents, um, you know, human effort to try Mm. to earn salvation and Mm -hmm. Sarah represents faith. And I think it's a really helpful understanding for, for us for what faith means. Mm. Um, the fact that Paul uses Abraham and Sarah as um, examples of what faith means is really good. As we're talking about this difference, you know, faith versus works, mm-hmm. Paul is not making a, a judgment about faith versus works. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he, he trusted... Um, Abraham trusted God, and it was credited to him as righteousness, right? Mm-hmm. But how did he trust him? Mm-hmm. He took crazy steps of faith. Mm-hmm. He didn't just believe that God was going to do all of this stuff. He, he, God would say, Abraham, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to this place. Mm-hmm. And Abraham would go. Yeah. Abraham, I want you to 
you know, do this and we do that. And Abraham would do it. Faith was worked out. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. There is no division between faith and works. Um, uh, So that's a a beautiful understanding for us to say, like, here's what true faith looks like. It's Mm -hmm. not... God doesn't love Abraham more or or uh, see him as righteous because he does the thing, mm-hmm. but he does the thing because he has faith. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so I think that's really important that we understand that. When Paul talks about works of the law in Galatians, he's pretty much exclusively talking about things like circumcision, mm-hmm. you know, uh, kosher food laws, mm-hmm. other external ceremonial ways mm-hmm. of... Mm-hmm. of of saying I'm set apart as a, as a Hebrew uh, as a Jewish person, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that's what he's kind of going after here. Not so much, hey, faith should <laughs> turn you into a more moral person. It should turn you into a mm-hmm. more kind and just person. He he mm-hmm. absolutely believes that. And so um, Bonhoeffer would call this cheap grace and mm-hmm. costly grace, right? Mm-hmm. And I think I've said this before. Um, you know, cheap grace is, you know. I get the gift, but I don't. Nothing's expected of me. I get to mm. do whatever I want, um, mm-hmm. and that's almost like scoffing in Jesus' face. Mm. You know, I know you sacrificed everything for me. Thanks a lot. I'm gonna go about my day now. You mm. know, um, <clears throat> the costly grace is this idea that, like, hey, I, I've received this this amazing gift from God, and now I'm, it's entrusted to me to live that out in in a way that um, uh, is totally different than than the way I was living before. Mm. So. Anyway, that, that, that was some of the stuff that's in chapter four that I, I, I lo- would have loved to dig into more. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, there's, there's only so much time. Uh, mm-hmm. And so it was a fun one. That was a fun passage to, to preach, though. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed your message. And one of the things that really stuck out to me that I was kind of hoping we, we could dive a little yeah. more into was uh, something that you, you kind of addressed towards the end of your message. You talked about these kind of false gospels, mm-hmm. half gospels. Yeah. And, and I thought that was really important. I was kind of wondering what your thought process was behind that. Yeah. Why is that so important for us in the church today yeah. to, to be informed about? Oh, because there's, there's for... I mean, clearly, since even the early church, there there have always been people who want to highlight an aspect of the gospel and say, this and only this is the gospel. And that leads to uh, a stunted understanding of what Jesus has done and how that should transform us. Mm-hmm. There are others who have added to the gospel mm-hmm. um, things that... that you know, don't make sense, such as, you know, these Judaizers in, in Galatians. Um, and, uh, and so it, there's always different expressions of it. You mm-hmm. know, they, they, in the early church, they dealt with all sorts of heresies about Jesus, right? Mm-hmm. Some, some believe Jesus was just a ghost. He wasn't really human, you know, because mm-hmm. God can't suffer, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and there were other people that were like, yeah, yeah, but he, he wasn't man, but we're not sure he was God. And so, like, they're always trying to wrestle with who Jesus was. And so, mm-hmm. like, when you hear the word heresy, and this is... This is just a, a throw in. Mm-hmm. When you hear the word heresy, it gets thrown around way too much. Mm-hmm. For for um, the, the early church, that word was usually only used for wrong belief about Jesus. And therefore, mm-hmm. what does it mean to be saved? What does it mm-hmm. mean to be invited into the family of God through mm-hmm. Christ, right? So these heresies about Jesus, he wasn't fully God or he wasn't uh, truly human or mm-hmm. whatever these things are, those are true heresies because right. uh, what we say about Jesus is mm-hmm. the ultimate question of life. Mm-hmm. So when somebody says, I don't like the way you think about the Bible, you're a heretic. No, nah, it doesn't really fly. <laughs> <Right>. No. <Nah. laughs> um, so uh, we've got to be careful not to throw that word around too much uh, mm-hmm. because it's lost all meaning. If it's just, hey, you believe something I don't like, you're a heretic, that, that's mm-hmm. it's a bridge too far, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but but all that to say, there, there, there are um, uh, heresies in the sense of things that we distort the gospel um, – uh, in in ways that um, man uh, paint Jesus in a in a uh, a light that isn't accurate and and always ends up harmful. That's mm. that's the key to all of this. When when I talked about those half gospels and false gospels, um, mm-hmm. it's almost always harmful. When you, think, mm-hmm. you know, I went through the gospel of hate, which not too hard to figure out where mm-hmm. that's going to go. It's going to lead to violence. Mm-hmm. When when the story of the world is there's good guys and bad guys, and we're the good guys, Jesus and our size, those guys are the bad guys, they need to be you know, mm-hmm. put in their place. Mm-hmm. That's going to go bad every right. time. Um, you know, we talked about gospel of prosperity. Mm-hmm. Um, how many, how many, 
how many poor people have been taken advantage of mm. because they were told you don't have enough faith, which is why you uh, don't have this material wealth that is the evidence mm-hmm. of, of true faith. Right. Um, and they've been taken advantage of financially. Um, mm-hmm. they're, they're spiritually abused when somebody is telling you that your life is terrible because you don't believe, because mm-hmm. you don't have enough faith. Oh, that's really toxic, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and the, the gospel of comfort, just like I said before, it takes our eyes off of the poor. It, mm-hmm. it, 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 it harms the world because we just sit in our own little bubble and act like everything's mm-hmm. okay and it's not okay. And mm-hmm. we're, we, the gospel does demand that we, that we see the world differently and we, mm-hmm. we want the rule and reign of Jesus to be extended mm-hmm. um, and, and for justice and mercy to become part of um, these, these system structures, you mm-hmm. know. Uh, localities, whatever, um, and then the, the last false gospel that was in there was the uh, the, the, the gospel of empire. Um, mm. And uh, you know, I, I addressed this a few weeks back, but the, the idea of Christian nationalism, mm. um, you know, that that um, that that is how God is working through the world is through one Christian nation, mm. um, <clears throat> despite the fact that Scripture, you know, talks about that that the kingdom of God is made up of people from every tribe and language, people mm-hmm. and nation, despite mm-hmm. the fact that every Every attempt at a Christian nationalism mm-hmm. has ended horribly in history. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's it, God isn't working that way. Mm-hmm. And then the, the half gospels that, that I talked about there was the gospel of personal salvation. Clearly, there's truth to that, right? God mm-hmm. does save individual souls. Um, Jesus did die for my sins, and mm-hmm. uh, uh, I have life because of that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but it stops there. Um, mm-hmm. And if that, you know, that's the easy believism, like, that's yeah. it. Okay. End of story, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the flip side of that is the, the gospel of, of um, oh, what do we call it, uh, social liberation, which, mm-hmm. you know, God is at work to uh, transform systems so that mm-hmm. there will be justice and peace in the world, and, mm-hmm. it, it, you know, there's no consideration for individuals. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, both of those things are true, and put together, they are the gospel. Mm-hmm. Um, but if we just emphasize one or the other, again, harm happens, because mm-hmm. if it's just about me and Jesus... I don't have to care about anything else that's going on in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm fine, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and if it's just about you know social liberation, I'm not I'm not worried about my neighbor. I'm only worried about like mm-hmm. h- how I vote, and I'm only mm-hmm. worried about how I you know call systems and structures. And there's real people, tangible people to be loved, to be um, uh, cared for, to uh, have the gospel you know spoken into their life, and so. Mm-hmm. Um, when we have that, those things together, we see that God is working in individual, individuals and that's working its way out into communities and into mm-hmm. structures and into systems, mm-hmm. real transformation takes place. So long story, long-winded way to say mm-hmm. we need to get the gospel right because if we don't, it, it will have negative impacts around us. It will mm-hmm. harm us. It will give us a view of Jesus that is just inaccurate. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's no life in these fake Jesuses. Mm-hmm. There's only life in the true Jesus, uh, the one that we read about in Scripture. I, I really appreciate you kind of diving a little bit more into yeah. what we we talked about on Sunday. Uh, what is it that we can kind of expect yeah. as we're wrapping up uh, this series pretty yeah. soon? Uh, what's to come in, in the next couple of weeks? Yeah. Uh, one quick note on the stuff I just talked about, Al Tizan's book, Whole and Reconciled. I recommend it. People read it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Not just for your own, you know, trying to figure out how do I make sense of the world, but also mm-hmm. like, how do we, not, how do we um, become students of the, the, the world that we live in, in order to represent Jesus well in that world? It's just mm-hmm. an excellent book for that. Um, mm-hmm. And he's, he's, a, he's one of those uh, theologians that lives out what he writes and preaches. Mm-hmm. And so I really appreciate his work there. Um, mm-hmm. But for, for this coming week, uh, I'm really excited because um, Chapter 5 of Galatians is my favorite because it contains the fruit of the Spirit. Mm. Um, and so I'm going to encourage everyone to memorize these things um, um, and, and or, you know, print them out, put them somewhere where you mm-hmm. see it. Um, yeah. You know, hard to yell at my children in anger uh, when that's plastered on the wall, mm. you know, and I have to go, yeah. ooh, that's not from the Spirit. That's from mm. somewhere else, you know. Yeah. And so a uh, good reminder of what what true faith starts to look like as, as we mature. Yeah, that's yeah. so good. Well, thank you for, for yeah. sitting down and, and kind of debriefing about what we talked about on Sunday. Yeah. And so uh, thank you so much for, for joining us. And, and uh, if you want to hear more from Pastor Eric, I'll go ahead and put a banner uh, linking to that message. Yeah. And we will see you for the next midweek mashup.